My name is Jordi Rose. I'm the Chief Technology Officer and one of the founders of D-Wave Systems. My name is Michael Hayden. I'm the Director of the Center for Molecular Medicine and Therapeutics and a Killam Professor in Medical Genetics at UBC. So I'm, uh, I have a little bit of a futurist bent. I like to think about things that might become true that aren't incompatible with the laws of physics. And there are a large number of possibilities of really grand challenge problems that might might break during our lifetimes and I find that extremely exciting. The exciting part for us right now is we're in our golden age. Uh, we have the ability through other advances in technology to know our whole human genome sequence. Three billion little letters of our alphabet. We understand and this has made us both human, unique and linked. Uh, our DNA alphabet has linked us to everybody and mankind. So things like um, the development of truly intelligent machines, which is something that I've been thinking about quite a lot over the last few years, given the work that I do. But there are also things that are more biological in nature that touch on this, which is questions about what it means to, what it means to be human. The challenges are in uh, how to incorporate this information, how to interpret it, how to predict, and this is where we need your help in terms of how to predict the changes in structure, what's deleterious, what's not. Uh, and also what we desperately need of our translators, people who can act between the science uh, and the person in the community in, to translate this information. We have to make sure this information is not lost in translation. We sit in these physical bodies where for a physicist these are collections of bits that store the states of the variety of things that we hold dear. All of our emotions and dreams somehow resolve down to the states of uh, memory registers somewhere in our in our consciousness or in our brains and our bodies. It's intriguing to me the possibility that you might be able to replicate that in a different substrate. This is leading and the advances in technology is leading to a whole rewriting of medicine. Uh, we used to think about cancer as one disease. We now that now know that breast cancer is 25 diseases, not so much defined by what you see under a microscope, but rather use what you see by the letters of changes of DNA an RNA uh, expressed in different ways at different types of disease. And the exciting part of that is that this leads to approaches to therapy. We're now beginning to understand why it is that some people respond well to a drug and other people don't, uh, and yet the cancer looks the same. It's a certain cancer. Or why certain people have certain genetic traits that lead them to have an adverse event to a drug. And we're beginning to understand that. So these things, uh, 10 years ago, and maybe even to a certain extent today, sound like that they might be the realm of strange science fiction, but I don't think they are anymore. So as we learn more and more about the science of uh, biological systems, I think that the mysteries start to become not exactly stripped away, but much more precise. So you can put your fingers on exactly what's happening in all of these different things. The more we understand about that, the more we'll be able to affect it and remove things like the disease and ultimately things that are even at a meta level from disease, things like aging, and, um, and then ultimately maybe conquer those things at some point.